All right, thanks for watching. And today I want to prove an absolutely amazing result. Because in a previous video, we have proved the, the monotone sequence theorem, which just says that if a sequence is increasing and bounded above, then it must converge. And implicitly in that proof, we use the least upper bound property because we define the soup of your sequence to be the limit. So in particular, the least upper bound property implies a monotone sequence theorem. But what we'll show today is in fact their equivalent. So in particular, if you're denying the least upper bound property, then you're also denying, in my opinion, the obvious fact, which is the monotone sequence theorem. And this proof, um, I got it from a professor from University of Wisconsin-Madison. I do not remember the name, unfortunately, but thank you so much for that proof. And the idea is, again, suppose the a monotone sequence theorem holds. It's true, that is, you know, every increasing sequence bounded above converges. We want to show that the least upper bound property is true, meaning that every non-empty subset of the real numbers that is bounded above has a least upper bound. Therefore, uh, suppose precisely that S is a non-empty subset of R that is bounded above. And what we want to show, we want to show that the least upper bound exists. So show that the supremum of S exists. And here's a cool thing. We will do this by constructing a very important or interesting sequence. So, and we'll do this recursively, meaning we define the first term and given Sn, we'll define the next term. Well, for the first term, just choose any element in S because we know it's not empty. So since S is not empty, there exists S1 in S. Some element in S, we call this S1. All right. So the initial step is true. Now what about the next step? Now, given Sn, define Sn plus 1 as follows. It's a bit of a non-obvious construction, so bear with me. So essentially, here's the idea, and then we'll make this rigorous. What we want to do, well, we want to first of all define Sn plus 1 as an element bigger than Sn, which is not a big problem, but the problem is we really want Sn plus 1 to be very far away from Sn. We kind of want to take big steps. Think of this as big. And we'll do this in terms of powers of two. So assume the following. So suppose, suppose the following is true. For all A and S and for all M in M, M in M, almost. Assume we have the following again. For all A in S and for all M in M, okay, for all uh, natural numbers M, we have A is less than or equal to Sn plus 2 to the minus N. But then, by the fact that 2 to the minus M goes to 0 as M goes to infinity, which you can show without the least upper bound property, we actually get that A is less than or equal to Sn. But what does that mean? It means that any element in S is less than or equal to Sn. But then this would imply that Sn is the least upper bound. So 
then the supremum of s would be Sn, and then we would be done. So the point is, the interesting scenario is if this is false. So from now on, assume the opposite. There is some element in S and some uh, natural number such that A is bigger than Sn plus 2 to the minus n. So again, so suppose there is a in S and M in N with A is bigger than Sn plus 2 to the minus N. So what this is saying? This is Sn. This is a big power of 2. And we know there's some element A that's even bigger than that. So this is Sn plus 2 to the minus N. And this is A. Now here's the thing. Without loss of generality, choose M to be the smallest integer that makes this true. So without loss of generality, make this very big. M is the smallest. Integer. With a is bigger than Sn plus 2 to the minus n. So, for instance, if it's, let's say it's true for uh, 2 to the minus 2, but also 2 to the minus 1, choose 2 to the minus 1. And by the way, this also does not use the least upper bound property because start with m equals 1. If this doesn't work, do m equals 2. I'm sorry, if like, uh, um, Let's go. Yeah, if this doesn't work, do m equals 2. If this doesn't work, do m equals 3, etc., etc. And this really has to stop because we know there's an integer uh, or a natural number that makes this work. So it's really just a finite number of steps. So no axiom of choice or anything. Going on, however, here is now the important step. So we know that there is some integer. There is some a in s that makes this work. So define Sn plus 1 to be one of those elements, one such element. So again, we know there is an element that makes this work. Actually, let Sn plus 1 be any such element. Okay, maybe this uses the axiom of choice, but not 100% sure. So let Sn plus 1 be any such element. In other words, the important thing to know is that Sn plus 1 is bigger than Sn plus 2 to the minus n. In other words, Sn plus 1 is very far away from Sn. So again, what have we done? We, we started with Sn. And then we just chose Sn to plus 1 to be a number that's really far away from Sn in terms of powers of 2. And so what do we have? Notice, well, Sn plus 1 is bigger than Sn. So in fact, Sn is increasing. So again, we started with S1, and then we can define S2, we can define S3, etc., etc. So Sn is increasing. But also remember, S is bounded above. So also, Sn is bounded. So bam! By the monotone sequence theorem, we know that Sn converges. Sn converges to S for some S by the monotone sequence theorem. This sequence, well, it converges to some number s, and I'm claiming, in fact, s must be the least upper bound of the uh, set s. And then we would be done because we found a least upper bound. So, claim uh, little s 
again, the limit of this sequence we found is the supremum of capital S. Okay, so there's two things we need to show. We need to show that little s is an upper bound and also show that little s is the least upper bound. So claim number one. S is an upper bound. of capital S, so suppose not, that is, there is an element in S that is bigger than little s, so again, this is the supposed at least upper bound, but suppose there's some element that's bigger than that, and we want to find a contradiction, then what do we know? We know that a minus s is bigger than 0. And because 2 to the minus k, for instance, converges to 0, we can for sure choose k large enough such that a minus s, this fixed constant, is bigger than 2 to the minus k. So since 2 to the minus k goes to 0, there is some, into, some natural number k with a minus s bigger than 2 to the minus k. Now, on the one hand, let's use the fact that Sn converges to s. So since Sn is increasing and uh, converges, converges to s, in particular, what do we know? We know that for all Sm, and there's a reason I'm using m, Sm is less than or equal to S. So for all m, Sm is less than or equal to S. And we'll need this in a second. And now let's look at A. So A, that is A minus S plus S, but remember, how did we define a minus s? I mean, how did we define k? We define it so that a minus s is bigger than 2 to the minus k plus s, which now it's bigger than or equal to 2 to the minus k plus sm. So what do we know? We know that there's one element of s, remember a was an s, that is at least... 2 to the minus k away from Sm. But remember, we define Sm plus 1 to be an element to be that's even further, maybe 2 to the minus something. So this is Sm plus 1. So what we know for sure, Sm plus 1 is at least 2 to the minus k away from Sm. So by definition, Sm, we know that Sm plus 1, it's bigger than 2 to the minus k plus Sm. Okay, now, this is true for every m, so for any value of Sm if you want, but now we really want to use the fact that Sm converges. But, since Sm converges to S, there is some m, I get epsilon m, so there is some n, m, sorry, with sm minus s is very close, in fact, even closer than 2 to the minus k. And what this implies, this implies sm minus s is less than 2 to the minus k plus 1. So Sm is less than 2 to the minus k plus 1 uh, plus s. That's what we know. Okay. Sorry. 
And this implies in particular Sm minus S, because we want a greater than sign. Uh, Sm minus S is greater than two minus two to the minus K plus one. So Sm is bigger than S minus two to the minus K plus one. Okay. Very good. And therefore with that M, we can just combine those inequalities so with that M, what do we know? We know Sm plus 1 is bigger than 2 to the minus k plus Sm. So that's valid for every M. But now this is valid for that specific M. So 2 to the minus k plus S minus 2 to the minus k plus 1. But again, this is, this is double of that, so it turns out this just becomes 2 to the minus k plus 1 plus s. Because I just used 2 to the minus k, it's 2 times 2 to the minus k plus 1. Right? So you have 2 times that minus that, which gives you that, and therefore sn plus 1, and not only that, the point is this becomes greater than s. So Sm plus 1, that's greater than S, but that's a problem because, you see, the sequence Sn is increasing and bounded above by S. And so this really contradicts the fact that all the values of your sequence are less than S, or less than or equal. So this, again, for this specific M, we have this, and this contradicts that Sn is less or equal to S for all N. Okay, a contradiction with what? A contradiction with the fact that, uh, with the assumption that it's not an upper bound. So now what we know, we know the limit is in fact an upper bound. And now all we need to show is that's the least upper bound, but that's much easier to show. So claim number two, uh, S is really the supremum of S. So suppose we have a smaller upper bound. S prime is less than S is an upper bound. So suppose S prime is an even smaller upper bound and we want to find a contradiction. And it basically contradicts uh, the fact that Sn converges to S. So because Sn converges to S, there is some N. Again, there's a capital N such that after this threshold, we have uh, Sn minus S is less than a positive quantity. The positive quantity here is S minus S prime. So what do we know? In particular, Sn minus S is bigger than minus epsilon. So minus S minus S prime, and that gives you S prime minus S. So Sn minus S is bigger than S prime minus S, but then what we get is S prime Sn is bigger than S prime, but this contradicts the fact that we found an element in your set that is bigger than that least upper bound. So, that uh, S prime is an upper bound. Upper bound means for any element in S, that element is less than or equal to S prime, but we just found an element of S that's bigger than an upper bound. So it cannot be an upper bound. And therefore we're done, and I wanna see we can go home happy, but probably we can stay home happy here. All right, thank you very much.